Well, good morning. It's great to see you this morning. We're going to take a moment right now just to thank all the readers, those who led us through the lessons and carols. Great job here this morning. Thank you. I mean, little Pearl was a pro up here, was she not? She just commanded the room. That was wonderful. Well, if I haven't met you yet, my name is Mike. I'm one of the pastors here at Christ Church, and welcome. We're glad that you're joining us uh, during this special time of the year. You know, one of the things I wanted to give you an update on was this thing that we're asking the church to be a part of, which is the Goodwill Movement. You can pick up one of these cards at the rack that's right outside the doors or at the Welcome Center. And what we're asking individuals to do in our church is to take some of these, to, to put it in your pocket, and to look for opportunities just to bless and do acts of goodwill to those that are around you every day. When you do that, we say, hey, just give them one of these cards. When you're doing it, there's a QR code where they can scan, and it actually leads them to a website that explains why we're doing acts like this during the season. Uh, And it gives them an opportunity to share their stories with how that has impacted them. And this morning, I had the opportunity to share three stories that came in this week from individuals here in our community that you have blessed. I'm excited to do this. It's always neat to see how just a small act of goodwill can impact someone's heart or impact their day. This first story comes from John. John writes these words. I'm not sure if I'm doing this right, but I got one of these cards in my mailbox with a pack of light bulbs. Now, my porch light has been burned out for a couple of weeks, and I just haven't had the time to get out there and change the bulbs. I'm guessing some neighbor of mine noticed and was kind enough to give me this simple gift. There really is still goodwill in this world, and it's alive on my street. This little gesture made me smile. My porch lights are shining once again. I hope my neighbor, whichever one it is, reads this and knows how it impacted me. It's exciting. Here's another story this week that came from Tess. Tess says this, A co-worker of mine realized that I wasn't having my best day at work. She ran to Starbucks and got my favorite specialty coffee and put it on my desk with this Goodwill card. I was so thankful. It was a bright spot in an otherwise terrible day. Thank you for this effort. It's really heartwarming. The last story is from Cassie. She says this in a very simple way. I was in Aldi and found a Goodwill cart stuck in the slot where I put the quarter to get my cart. (laughs) You saved me a quarter, so I will pass this Goodwill on to someone else. (laughs) Friends, it's exciting, and, and what an appropriate time for us just to share the Goodwill that God has shared with us, with the world around us. So I encourage you, pick up some of these cards, have some fun with it this week. You'll never know how it will impact someone's heart or impact someone's life or day. Well, this morning, we are in the third week of Advent and in our series entitled Goodwill. In this series, we've been studying and, and anticipating the arrival of Jesus Christ, as we do in the Advent season. We've also been looking at some of the well-known Christmas carols that we have sung for years. And today, we're going to look at one of the most theologically rich carols. We're going to look at Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Before we do that, though, I have a question for you. When is the last time that you ever experienced a overpacked moment? An overpacked moment is a moment where there is maybe so much emotion or so much change or so much meaning that is happening that you cannot fully appreciate it while it's actually happening in that particular moment. Think of things like this, like your, your wedding day. I mean, if two 20-year-olds are standing there pledging their lives to each other, they have no idea what they're doing for the rest of their lives because it's overpacked. There's too much meaning. There's too much change in that moment. You can't fully appreciate it while it's happening. It takes years to appreciate that. Or maybe the birth of a child. Or maybe a retirement or a move to a new city. These monumental moments when life shifts. For me... One of these moments of uh, kind of overpacked moments happened with the birth of both of our children. Both of these moments were overpacked with change and meaning for Rochelle and for myself in such a way uh, that you cannot understand. And this is especially true when it comes to the birth of my first child because I was completely oblivious to what was coming when this happened. Maybe some of the dads in the room can relate to this. I had never been in a room when a child was born before this moment. 
Uh, I had never fathered a child. I, I had really never held a baby up until this moment. So I had no idea the change that was coming when my first daughter was born. I still thought in the back of my mind that I was going to buy a jet ski that year. That definitely changed at this moment. But I, this overpacked moment began to become real to me the moment I locked eyes with my daughter Elena for the very first time. You can't anticipate that. I remember looking at her going, wow, something has changed. That will grow you up really quickly when you see the birth of your child. A new love was birthed in my heart. It was a protective love, the love of a father that I, I didn't have up until that moment. Everything changed in our lives because it was an overpacked moment. Friends, today we're going to look at the most overpacked moment in human history. There is more meaning happening in this moment than anyone could have pop comprehended while it was happening. It takes years, maybe even a lifetime of a follower of Jesus to fully understand everything that was happening in this moment. Of course, I'm talking about the moment that Jesus arrived. We read this earlier, I'm going to read it again for us here this morning. We see this in Scripture in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14, where the Bible says this. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, watching over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those whom his favor rests. This is an overpacked moment for sure. It was captured by Charles Wesley in the first line of his great Christmas carol, Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Wesley, in the first line of his carol, calls us to pay attention. He says, listen and take notice. Hark is not a common word that we use in our language today, but it, it literally means to listen, to take notice, to pay close attention. We might loosely translate it today as, hey, hey, don't miss this. This is a moment that will change everything. It is truly an overpacked moment. The angels announced the coming of a newborn king, but not just any king one that would rule the world, and one that would change all of our lives. In the third stanza of this carol, Wensley begins to unpack this moment, this moment of Christ's birth, by reminding us who exactly this King Jesus, this child, really is. And the first thing that we see in the line of this carol is, Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace. This is a reference to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, where Scripture says, For unto us a child is born. This is hundreds of years before the birth of Christ. This prophecy was shared. To us a child is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. In this season, we need to remember that Jesus came to bring peace. Peace between our sin and the consequences that it deserves. Peace in our lives and the way that we relate to one another. And peace in our hearts. Some of us here today need to remember where we need to find our peace. You see, packed into this child is one that gives peace in all seasons of life. And I have noticed that the closer one is to Jesus, the more peace they seem to have. Maybe you are here today and this is the first Christmas that you will experience without a loved one. 
Or maybe you've experienced a significant life change or you're seeing one on the horizon. In this overpacked moment, will you remember the source of your peace? Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Wesley continues in this carol, and in the second line of the stanza says, Hail, the Son of Righteousness. This is a reference to Malachi chapter 4, verse 2, where Scripture says, But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will come with healing in its rays, and you will go out and frolic like well-fed calves. It's a kind of an interesting imagery, frolicking like well-fed calves. Sounds fun. I look forward to that day. Here we begin to peel back another layer in this carol. As Wesley now references the second coming of Jesus and his return. He uses this imagery of a rising sun and the warmth and healing that comes from the sun's rays. You know, for some of us, the lack of sun during this time can be a, a real struggle, can it not? The sun, we know from science, helps the production of vitamin D in our body, which has a number of health benefits. The lack of sunlight can affect some people's physical and even emotional health. Here, Malachi uses this imagery of a sun and the warmth that comes through the rays of the sun and the healing that comes in the sun, and he reminds us, that one day Jesus will return and that he will make all things right. Friends, we don't have to hold on to a hurt for our entire lives. We don't have to try to get even when someone wrongs us in our lives. We can trust that one day Jesus will make all things right. This carol continues on uh, in this stanza, and Wesley writes, Light and life to all he brings. This is a reference to John chapter 8, verse 12, where Scripture says, When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Pastor Craig did an amazing job speaking on the imagery of life last week here in our church service, but here we see it again in this carol. It's a reminder that Jesus is stronger than the darkness of this world, that he illuminates our path, and that he, in him we find life, true life. It is why during this time of year, the darkest time of year, we put up lights everywhere to be reminded that Jesus is the light of the world. Then this carol ends with four lines that are incredibly rich, and incredibly powerful. The carol says, Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. This is a reference to Philippians chapter 2 and 1 Peter chapter 1, where scripture says this, Jesus, who being the very nature God, did not consider the quality with God, something to be used to his own advantage. But rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. Being made in human likeness and being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. In First Peter chapter 1, verse 3, Scripture says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and to, into an inheritance that will never perish or spoil or fade, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. You see, Wesley finishes his great carol with an outline of the gospel. A reminder to us that packed into this child is God. I cannot imagine the humility it would take for one who understood all to cry. 
He came not to be served, but to serve others, to be an atoning sacrifice that we might have eternal life. You might be here this morning and thinking, well, you don't know me. I've really messed up. There's no way that I'm good enough. Friends, yes, you. You might think, I'm not that important. There's no way that God notices me. He came to a group of shepherds. It could not have been the lowly, a lowlier group of individuals. This was a job for young boys. And the men that were watching the sheep, he came to them. Yes, you. He comes to us all. You see, that's a lot. This is an overpacked moment. This child that is coming to the earth that we celebrate, that we wait for, Well, there's a lot packed into him. He is the Prince of Peace, the Son of Righteousness. He brings light and life to everyone who comes to him. And healing comes in his presence and in his wings. Mild, he he laid the glory that he had by. He was born so that none of us would die. Born to give us second birth. Born to raise each and every one of us. So what do you do in an overpacked moment like this? A proper response. I think we can take a cue from the shepherds in the second chapter of Luke. Scripture says when they heard all of this, the announcement of Jesus, the choir of angels, they gathered themselves and did this in verse 15. When the angels had left them, and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. You see, friends, that is the only proper response. Let us go and see. Let us go and see this Jesus. Maybe you are here today, and to be honest, You have wandered away from Jesus over the past few months or years. The things that you have done, the things that you have set your mind on, the condition maybe of your heart has caused you to drift away from Jesus. Hark! Will you listen? He is with us. Will you come back? Maybe you're here today and you never really stop to consider the miracle that is Jesus. Maybe you made Jesus a compartment of your life. Or maybe you show up because you want to please the loved one that is bringing you each and every week. But you know in your heart that there has to be a better source of peace in this life. Will you listen? Hark! Come and see this Jesus. You take notice of him. Maybe you're here today and your heart is full. This service has filled up your heart with emotions as you anticipate and celebrate Jesus. You're walking close with Jesus every day and obeying his teaching. Hark, will you worship him today with your whole heart? Will you remember the amazing overpacked moment When Jesus, when God came to us. You know, back to that story of the overpacked moment of the the birth of my daughter. A couple weeks after her birth, maybe less than that, I was kicked out of the house to go back to work. Uh, My my mom was there with Rochelle. My mother-in-law was there with Rochelle. And it became pretty quickly obvious that I needed to go away and go back to work. I know some guys have long paternity leaves. Uh, We did not have that back in my day. Um, And it was better for all of us if I went back to work. And I remember maybe a week or so afterwards, I was at work in the office eating lunch with some of um, my friends um, and co-workers. And there was another young man who had just got married sitting next to me. And there was an older woman who was at the table. And we were just talking about life. And this young man asked me, he's like, Mike, what was it like to have a child? And I was the, the expert because I just had a child two weeks before that. And so I was trying to explain to him this experience, this, this overpacked moment. And I was fumbling over my words. And I kept saying, you know, 
when I saw her for the first time, it, it was like, it was like, and I, I couldn't find the words. And this older woman that was sitting at her table, she put her hand on mine, and she interrupted me, and she said, it's like you knew that you would die for her if you had to. And I went, that's right. That's right. The moment that I met her, I knew I would do anything for either one of my children because this love of a father was seated in my heart. I would protect them and provide for them and do everything I could possibly in my life for them. Friends, the amazing mystery of Christmas is that packed in this child is one that would do exactly that for you and for me. One that loves us in a way that we cannot fully comprehend. That he loves us perfectly. And that he loves us completely. Will you listen this Christmas season? Will you take notice? Will you hark? God is with us. I invite you to stand here this morning as we respond to that message. And as we prepare to sing this great song of worship back to the Lord. When we pray here this morning together, let's pray. God, we are grateful for this morning and the reminder that you came near to us. That in our moments of grace, greatest need that you are here, that you bring peace, that you bring healing in your presence. And God, we need you today. God, we are here listening to you. We ask that you would speak to our hearts, that you would fuel our souls. And if you're here today, and maybe you've never responded to Jesus, will you simply pray this prayer here this morning to invite him into your heart? Or maybe you've drifted away from him, quite honestly. And today is the day that you would like to listen, to take notice, and come back to him. Would you simply pray this prayer quietly in your heart? Jesus, today, I return to you. I see you, Jesus, this morning. I'm listening to you. God, today I yield my heart and my life to you. I ask that you would come in and I embrace the new life that I have found in you. Today I give you my heart, I give you my life, and I will follow you. It is in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen.